Hi everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome to a very interesting video today. You can see we've got quite a bit of trauma in the ear canal and I can tell you from the patient history that this was caused by a cotton bud. And quite amazing how such a large amount of trauma can be caused by a cotton bud. Um, but that is the case uh, and it's led to a very deep impaction of earwax as well. But you can see here, we've obviously had a laceration here. So uh, there's been a, a breakage of the skin and what you see here is dried blood, clotted blood. So there's a, a scab has formed and that's sort of acting as a shield, I suppose, to cover the wound to stop it getting infected. And then just on the right hand side, you can see as well as this laceration, we have a lot of bleeding underneath the skin or there was bleeding underneath the skin. Uh, and it's now time to kind of turn to this purple color. And just down here, I thought I would might as well mark it because it's a slight yellow tinge. And because it's on the perimeter of the bruise, I thought that might just be bilirubin. Um, arguably, it could just be a smearing of wax, but um, I thought it would be interesting to mark it. And then here's the, the final present that the, the cotton bud has left us. So, I mean, overall, you know, this cotton bud usage couldn't have gone worse because it's not only caused a huge amount of trauma, but it's, it's shoved this large plug of wax right up against the eardrum. So what I'm going to have to try and do is just very, very carefully move this plug of wax around the trauma, over the top of the trauma, because what I don't want to do is drag this big plug of wax out and scrape it against the scab and then open that up. I do not want to open up that laceration again. Probably nothing bad would happen per se, but uh, again, that, that scab there is forming a nice little protective barrier, a cap over the wound, and the healing process has begun. So I don't want to open that up and cause any discontinuity in the skin, which would possibly allow infection to occur. So we're just going to have to avoid it at all costs. And the, the reason why I decided to mark the, the purple area and possibly the yellow area is just to demonstrate the fact that I don't think necessarily anything bad, in, bad has happened here. So there's no obvious signs of inflammation. The patient's not in pain, there's no swelling. So, you know, this is just a very simple hematoma. So a hematoma is just blood that's, that's escaped out of blood vessels. And that's occurred because the cotton bud has obviously gone in with a huge amount of force and ruptured a few blood vessels, capillaries in the skin. And what will happen is that as, you know, fresh oxygenated blood will appear bright red, obviously, but as that blood is broken down in the tissue by white blood cells, a few different things will happen. So red, red blood cells obviously should not be in tissue. And when they are there, the, the white blood cells in your tissue, resident in the skin, um, will start eating them. So they're, they're engulfed by special white blood cells called macrophages. And as that occurs, the, the, you will get a darkening of the bruise. So it will turn kind of a purplish or blue color um, because there's no longer that fresh, you know, red oxygenated blood in the tissue. And then as the white blood cells break down, the red blood cells, you will get a breakdown of hemoglobin. So hemoglobin is what makes red blood cells red. Um, and hemoglobin is what causes oxygen to bind to your red blood cells. And the hemoglobin will be broken down into heme and globin, and the globin will just turn into amino acids. But the heme will be, bro will be broken down further into um, biliverde, which, will give, which is green in color, and also bilirubin, which is yellow in color. And you'll find that, um, I mean, or I'm sure all of you at some point have had a bruise on your arm or your you know, leg or whatever, and you'll find that after a certain time, um, that bruise will turn a different color. It will turn purple and it may turn a slight green tinge and then it will turn yellow before it disappears. Um, and that's because of the bilirubin. So your, your red blood cells have been broken down because they're not meant to be there. And the hemoglobin that was in, that was part of the red blood cell has been broken down and broken down and broken down ultimately into bilirubin. Um, and if any of you know um, anything about jaundice, you'll know that that's what jaundice is. So um, that there is too much bilirubin in your body. So um, there we go, just a short one today. But I thought it was just very nice to, to briefly explore the trauma there and um, you know why the, why the blood is in the tissue and what happens to it and why it would, you know, the fact that it's a different color 
you know, purple and yellow isn't necessarily a sign that anything bad is happening. That's just the fact that the body is doing what it's supposed to do. And it's getting rid of things that shouldn't be embedded in tissue. We should have um, red blood cells in blood vessels and then anything outside in tissue should be interstitial fluid and, you know, other things that nourish cells. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video interesting. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below and I will try my very best to get back to you. And as always, I will see you on the next video.